Okay, before we get started, can you please give me compliments on my new earrings and my matching necklace? Thank you. Okay, we can get started now. <laughs> My name is Josie. You can also know me as Sir Plain Slot from over on Instagram or TikTok. So go ahead and follow me. Today I'm gonna talk about uh, different types of pods. There are gonna be two main themes covered here. First one of them is gonna be how to choose the right size of a pod. And the second theme is gonna be choosing the right type of pod for the type of plant that you have. I'm basically gonna talk about the pros and cons of plastic pods and terracotta pods so that you can decide which one might be the best one for you. So let's get right into it. First, when a plant starts growing, it obviously starts out really really small. An example of that would be this pothos cutting uh, that I propagated from a wet stick. It didn't used to have anything and it grew some roots and it also grew a leaf. So I'm also gonna show you a comparison. So this is a leaf propagation that I took. So what this looked like when I cut it was it had the leaf, it had the stem, it didn't have any roots. So the only thing that grew in here is basically the root and the new growth point as you can see here. And the number one thing, when you want to pot up your propagations like this, you need to look at the size of the roots rather than the size of the leaf or the leaves. Because the roots, it's what's gonna be in the soil. I would probably prop both of these into the same pot and that would probably be a pot of this size. So you can see what it would look like roughly if this was potted in this pot. Right, so I feel like despite trying, I didn't really get my point across as well as I could have. So I'm gonna fix that now. <laughs> Basically, what I was trying to say is don't let the appearance of big plants like this one uh, make you pot it in too big of a pot. So. Let me scooch over. As you can see, this monstera leaf is, you know, it's pretty big, but the root system isn't exactly impressive, you could say. Yeah, basically not very big at all. So I've noticed a lot of people when they have a plant like this one that has a huge leaf or a lot of foliage that's not really proportionate to the roots, they tend to pot it in too big of a pot. So just to give you an example, if I was to pot up this cutting, I'm not gonna do that because this literally like on the brink of death. If I was to pot up this cutting in particular, I would probably pot it up in this pot, which is uh, 12 centimeters in diameter. As you can see, this is roughly what it would look like if it was potted up. Generally speaking, the pot should be as long as the roots are, if not shorter. The thing is, you know, the roots are gonna grow and it's gonna take a while before it fills up the pot. So in the meantime, it doesn't matter that, you know, it's a pot that's on the smaller side. I hope that makes my explanation more clear. So let's get back to the main part of the video now. But one thing I do want to say is that when you're not really sure about potting up your cuttings, I would opt for a smaller pot rather than a larger pot. That's for one reason, and that is that when you pot up a plant into a smaller pot, it's always easy to repot it and up pot it and, you know, give it more space to grow. It's never really gonna hurt your plant. Whereas if you put a plant into big of a pot, the soil is gonna be too moist because there's not gonna be enough roots to suck up the water which means that your roots might start rotting and your plant might die as a result. So always think about the root size that you have and remember it's always better to down pot than up pot. Now let's talk about repotting plants that are already in a pot like this one. So first of all, a clear indication that you should probably up pot your plant is is when the roots start growing out of the pot, as you can see right here, for example. Again, if you're not really sure if it's time to repot, I would recommend that you wait a bit longer rather than not wait long enough. With this plant, I mean, it does have roots growing out of the bottom, but I'm gonna wait 
because I don't think it's necessary to repot it yet. This plant in particular is in an 11 and a half centimeter pot. Since this is 11 and a half centimeters, I usually up pot uh, by about five centimeters or that is two inches, I believe. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Since this is 11 and a half, I would probably up pot to a 16 and a half pot, maybe a 17 centimeter pot. Of course, it's gonna depend on how developed the root system is. One thing you might also consider is how fast the roots on the plant grow. So let's say if you're repotting a ZZ plant, ZZ's roots grow like crazy so with that plant i would maybe consider going like to i don't know maybe 18 centimeters even but again like i said with potting up the cuttings i would recommend that you stick with smaller rather than larger again if you're not sure about whether you should choose a 17 centimeter pot or an 18 centimeter pot i would always up for the smaller one because like i said you can always up pot but uh you can't always save your plant from root rot so I'm making this sound really scary. It's not supposed to be scary. I'm just trying to give you the best advice. <laughs> Okay, moving on. So let's now talk about the different types of pots and which might be the best for you and your plants. I would say that there are two main categories of pots and that is plastic pots and terracotta pots. So let's talk about plastic pots first. Let's start with the benefits of them, shall we? So number one benefit is that they're really light. So even when you get like a 20 centimeter, 30 centimeter pot, it's still really easy to pick it up and uh, basically not as heavy as a terracotta pot would be. Second thing is that if you check your plants for whether they need to be watered or not by picking the plant up based on the weight, I mean, I think that the plastic pots are easier because when you have a plant in a plastic pot, you're not really picking up the pot, you're just picking up the soil and the plant because the actual weight of the pot is minuscule compared to the plant. Whereas with with terracotta, you know, terracotta is quite heavy, which means that for me, at least personally, it's quite hard to know when the plants are ready to repot. I don't know if that's because I'm not really used to terracotta yet, but I generally find it a lot easier to know when my plants need to be watered with plastic pots. One of the best thing about plastic pots is that when you want to buy them, they're really cheap, but the best part actually is that you don't even actually have to buy these. What I would recommend if you're on the hunt for uh, plastic nursery pots is just join your local plant Facebook group and ask if anybody has these lying around. Most of the time people are actually looking to get rid of these and they would much rather gift it to you for free than to throw them out, which is definitely a positive. Another benefit of plastic pots is that they can be clear. If you're not uh, new to my channel, then you know I have talked about clear pots before. They're good not only for lecha plants, but also soil plants for checking the moisture levels, but also the roots. You can't really get clear terracotta pots. The only downside I would say to plastic pots is that they aren't very aesthetically pleasing. So this is usually what my plant situation looks like. It's usually a nursery pot on top of a saucer. But with terracotta, you know, it just looks nice even though it's not in any sort of a cover pot or anything. And in terms of which plants would be suitable for plastic pots, that is generally speaking all of the plants that uh, like to be kept moist. And that is because since the plastic pots aren't porous, they don't let the water evaporate, whereas terracotta pots do do that. If you put the same plant, one in a terracotta pot and one in a plastic pot, the one in the terracotta would need to be watered sooner than the one in the plastic pot because the terracotta actually soaks up the water into the pot and makes it evaporate a lot easier. Specifically, those are plants like Maranta, any sort of rarer tropical plants like Anthuriums, mainly prayer plants, I would say. If you're looking to up pot your prayer plants, I would opt for a plastic pot rather than terracotta. 
but also this really depends on what type of waterer you are. If you're an underwater, then plastic pots would be better for you, whereas if you're an overwater, terracotta pots would be better for you because obviously the water's gonna evaporate in terracotta faster than it would from a plastic pot. And yeah, speaking of the plastic pots being ugly, um, if you wanna make them look nice, uh, you do have to buy some sort of a cover pot for it. Um, this is a bad example because this is an ugly ass cover pot, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> These cover pots can really get expensive sometimes and it's really difficult to get all of them matching. Whereas if you have all of your plants in terracotta pots, terracotta matches terracotta, doesn't it? So that kind of makes that problem go away. Right, so now let's talk about terracotta pots. When I say terracotta, I mean pots that look like this, that don't have any glaze in them or uh, on the outside of them. If you have a glazed terracotta pot or any sort of glazed ceramic pot, it doesn't actually soak up the water like the unglazed terracotta does. So terracotta meaning porous terracotta. So as I already mentioned, terracotta pots are definitely very pretty. I personally prefer terracotta to be new and clean uh, because I don't really like things to be looking dirty. <laughs> so when you have a situation such as this one, that's not really to my liking, but a lot of people actually really like the patina look on their terracotta. If you're like me and you're not really a big fan of patina, then maybe terracotta is not for you, but I'll leave that up to you to decide. So terracotta pots you can also get secondhand, uh, either if someone's giving them away or you can often find them in thrift shops. But when you buy them new, terracotta pots are actually more expensive than plastic pots. But of course the number one difference between plastic and terracotta pots is that plants in terracotta pots dry out a lot faster. So for that reason I wouldn't recommend you putting your prayer plants in here or generally your moisture loving plants, especially if you're an under Waterer. But on the other hand, if you're an overwaterer, then terracotta are amazing. Pretty much all plants that aren't moisture loving plants are suitable to be in terracotta. Generally speaking, uh, choosing the type of pot that will be perfect for you really depends on your tendencies as a plant parent. For me personally, I don't really have a preference between the two because they both have pros and they both have cons. I will probably by default choose plastic pots just because I have an abundance of them and I don't really see a point in buying terracotta pots when I have plenty of plastic ones. I also wanted to mention as a last note, if you want to pot up your plant in a glazed terracotta or a ceramic pot, you should always, 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 always make sure that it has a drainage hole at the bottom. That's these little, you know, holes at the bottom. <laughs> the unglazed terracotta pots and the plastic pots come with drainage holes as a default so you don't really have to worry about those but when you do see a nice pot let's say let's say this was a really nice pot so if you saw this in a shop and really liked it and wanted to pot a plant directly into it I would recommend uh, drilling a drainage hole into the bottom first because your plant kind of needs to have some outlet so that the water can flow out of there. Right, so I think that's everything that I wanted to mention today. Let me know if you have any questions and which type of pot you prefer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I would very much appreciate it. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Sir Plants a Lot, and I will see you here for my next video. Bye!